Good evening and thank you for joining me on Black News Tonight. I'm Mark Lamont Hill. Breaking news tonight, a dire warning for Louisiana residents ahead of Hurricane Ida. The storm already pummeling Cuba's Isle of Youth with strong winds and rain. Ida reached hurricane status much quicker than forecasters expected and forecasters believe it will keep gaining strength. Louisiana officials warning residents to evacuate if they can, especially those near the levees. The National Weather Service, as well as the governor of the state of Louisiana, have indicated that our time for even implementing contraflow, we don't have the time to do so. Therefore, the city cannot issue a mandatory evacuation because we don't have the time. We have pivoted to, one, voluntary evacuation. Absolutely, this is the time. Hurricane Ida coming at the same time as the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. The storm hit back in 2005 as a Category 5 hurricane. Over 1,800 people died, thousands others permanently displaced. An update concerning the restrictive voting bill out of Texas. House Republicans approving the new restrictions today. This after months of delay, Texas Democrats spent weeks in Washington, D.C., hoping to get Congress to pass federal voting rights protections. But Republicans were finally able to form a quorum as several Democratic lawmakers returned to the state. The bill will move to the state Senate and then on to Governor Greg Abbott's desk, who has already said that he will sign it into law. According to the Census Bureau, about 3.5 million people in the United States said they face eviction in the next two months. The Biden administration reimposed the eviction moratorium in early August to help citizens during the pandemic. But last night, the Supreme Court ruled to block the administration's moratorium and allow evictions to resume. This comes after a group of landlords challenged the moratorium, arguing that the CDC did not have the power to impose such a restriction. Economist Intelligence Unit is reporting the world economy is set to lose trillions of dollars due to vaccine inequities in low and middle income countries. Reports show countries unable to vaccinate 60% of their population by mid-2022 are expected to lose $2.3 trillion between 2022 and 2025. The EUI reports inequity arose due to difficulties in storing vaccines, global shortage of production, and vaccine hesitancy. Many low-income countries cannot afford the vaccine for their residents, and only 15 million of the 5 billion doses have been administered in lower income countries. El Salvador recently announced that they will be recognizing cryptocurrencies and now the country of Cuba is following suit. The popularity of cryptocurrencies in Cuba has been rapidly growing and the country is now jumping on board. Not everything will be easy though, as the country still needs to set rules and regulations on how to control it. Evacuations in Afghanistan continuing today after Thursday's attack at the Kabul airport. Officials say at least 169 people are dead, including 13 U.S. troops. But officials across the country are worried. The White House says the next few days will be, quote, the most dangerous. Officials say that another Kabul attack is likely, and the U.S. says ISIS-K is to blame for the attack. The White House says over 12,000 people have been evacuated from Kabul within 24 hours, bringing the entire number of evacuations to 111,000, including 5,100 U.S. citizens. With the arrival of evacuees from conflict-torn Afghanistan in Uganda, the former Alliance for National Transportation or Transformation presidential candidate, retired Major General Mugisha Muntu, is warning President Yoweri Museveni against allowing Afghan evacuees into the country. Muntu expressed his concerns about human rights violations and the country's security with the arrival of Afghan refugees, while adding that Uganda already 
has its own human rights violations, as well as the lack of rule, in, of rule of law and integrity to deal with. The chaos and suffering in Afghanistan are a devastating human crisis, one with global implications. But all too often, what we don't talk about is the role that our own government has played and what policies and decisions could have been avoided. Well, we want to help change that. We want to offer history and context about the U.S. involvement in Afghanistan. And that's why we're bringing on this next guest. Margaret Kimberly is editor and senior columnist for Black Agenda Report. Margaret, thank you so much for joining me on Black News tonight. Welcome to the show. Uh, the images of people trying to evacuate Afghanistan bring back memories, to me at least, of Vietnam. <laughs> what do you make of that kind of comparison? Well, I think it's natural. Um, you know, Americans have an image of their country as being efficient, being competent, and Americans don't like to be embarrassed. So to see their country uh, doing what it did nearly 50 years ago, uh, leaving a country that it had invested uh, uh, billions of dollars in, leaving people behind who helped with the occupation, I think the uh, comparison is uh, obvious. It's, um, uh, it's not surprising that that's uh, the thinking that comes up, although there are significant differences between Afghanistan and Vietnam. So when did the United States' involvement in Afghanistan actually begin and, and why did it begin? Well, it first began more than 40 years ago when Jimmy Carter was president. Um, uh, a left-wing government in Afghanistan asked the Soviet Union to uh, assist them. It, it was not a Soviet invasion that we were told. The government asked for their help. The United States decided to interfere by backing uh, jihadists, the uh, Mujahideen at the time. So this began with Carter, continued with uh, Reagan, with uh, uh, George H.W. Bush, with uh, Bill Clinton, and uh, it culminated in uh, the uh, attacks of 9-11. You know, Osama bin Laden was one of those people who was called a hero. The U.S. Uh, and began a tradition of using jihadists in order to fulfill its own strategic objectives. So we went from calling people like bin Laden heroes to calling them villains, to invading the country, to staying for 20 years, uh, So, thousands of people so, so, allegedly chasing the um, Taliban out, but now the Taliban are back in. So, I don't want to oversimplify this brilliant analysis you just gave, but it seems to me you're saying that the very people who we're now calling terrorists and the very people who we're seeing as the enemy in Afghanistan were propped up by the United States when, we, when they served our interests. And at some point, they stopped serving our interests. Uh, and began to serve other interests, and now we're demonizing them. That's not to say there's, that the Taliban is good, it's just to say that how we perceive them has shifted across time. Yes, it's 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 true, and and but I I think we have to not think about people being good and bad. These uh, this is a resistance of U.S. occupation, and this you know this 20 year long war, um, it was a uh, I'm going to call it a scam, uh, a trillion a couple trillion dollars actually went into the uh, military industrial complex. The U.S. propping up presidents. Every Afghan president was a U.S. puppet. Uh, the U.S. Um, uh, propped up their army, actually was the one paying their army. And one of the reasons the Taliban took over so quickly is the soldiers weren't being paid anymore. And they simply left. They deserted. And there were far fewer of them than we were told. Uh, and we've been told decades of uh, outright lies about Afghanistan. Washington Post did, to their credit, very good reporting on that last year. So this was never winnable. There was no chance of the United States conquering this entire country. So we have people dead, injured, maimed. Uh, the killing continue and uh, trillions of public dollars spent. So I have an audience of black people. It's about 13 and a half million people watching right now, a bunch of them black, and they want to know how does this affect us? Why should we care about this? And how has 
the last four decades of whether it's military involvement, military intervention by the United States, or just the last two decades of occupation, uh, what impact has it had on us as a community? Because that was our money. Uh, $750 billion a year in defense spending, 60% of discretionary spending in this country. It is literally why we cannot have nice things. We can't have infrastructure, schools, <laughs> public health. We, I could go on and on and on with all the things that Americans could have if we did not have this arm of government, this bipartisan-supported uh, military-industrial complex, which gets its money, whether Democrats or Republicans are in the White House, and even people who call themselves progressive uh, vote for these uh, spending bills to keep giving them billions of dollars. So it has a direct impact on our lives. Margaret, I have to run, but before you go, and I know there's no simple answers or problem-free solutions here, but what should the ask be? You know, telling the United States government this moment to leave after creating this awful mess seems that it could cre create some uh, instability and staying obviously means a prolonged occupation. What's the right, how do you, what's the right out here? What, 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 what should pro a progressive or even radical thinker uh, be asking for at this juncture in history? Well, very simply, end imperialism close the foreign military bases, cut the military budget in half, end the interventions in the uh, affairs of other countries. I think the answer is very simple. It's not something that Americans are accustomed to hearing. Um, this narrative has been uh, disappeared, so thank you very much for having me on. But that is the answer. No more imperialism. No more bloated military budgets. No more interference in the affairs of other countries. People in Afghanistan are able to figure things out for themselves and decide for themselves what kind of government they want without any interference of, from the U.S. And ultimately, it's not our business what sort of government they choose. Margaret Kimberly, thank you so much for joining me on Black News tonight. Everybody, be sure to join the conversation. We want to hear from you. Head over to our BNC Instagram pages and our Twitter pages and let us know how you feel. Also, visit the website bnc.tv and subscribe to our YouTube page to check out clips from the show.